now. On 105.9 FM and streaming worldwide on the WMAL app. O'Connor and Company. It's 606. You're listening to O'Connor and Company this Friday morning in the nation's capital, the 17th day of November. Thanksgiving literally around the corner this last weekend before Thanksgiving week. Always yeah. a fun atmosphere. It is. In this, in this so country. festive. Exactly. Coming up in 30 minutes, Denisha Allen, Black Minds Matter. We'll get her latest reaction to Maryland schools failing the children of Baltimore. Mm. 705, Adam Credo of Free Beacon. 735, Phil Wegman, Real Clear Politics. 815, Julie Donaldson. Talk about the Commanders game this weekend. And then at 835, Brett Baer from Fox News Channel. All right, Patrice Anwuka, you ready to go? I'm, I'm roaring to go. Let's roar away. <laughs> uh, a TikToker, a uh, TikTok viral story mm. right now going on. Where, and although I, I think that it's already starting to get sort of tamped down because mm. the outcry was so ugly. We mentioned this briefly yesterday, but we've got more details on it and actually some of the audio involved here. As people take to TikTok and pretend like they've just read. Osama bin Laden's letter to America where he justified hmm. the slaughter of 3,000 innocent Americans. And they act like they've just read, you know, a revelation from God hmm. about the real meaning of life. Take a, a, a quick listen to some of these morons. This morning I read Letter to America, which is Osama bin Laden's letter to America explaining why he attacked Americans and I am ashamed to say that I not only have never read this letter, but I didn't even know this letter existed. It's wild, and everyone should read it. If you yeah, read um, it yet. imagine a TikTok trend. I just read Mein Kampf mm. by Adolf Hitler. I am shocked to say that I had never read it, and I didn't even know it existed. Everybody should read Mein mm. Kampf to understand why Hitler murdered millions of Jews and tried to take over the world through I mean that's yeah that is a completely apt comparison frankly yeah. and these people are moral idiots Patrice well they're the useful idiots that uh Hamas refers to yeah well, and, and what Karl Marx refers to and what Joseph Stalin referred mm -hmm. to uneducated actually I shouldn't say uneducated they're all they're well educated, all too well in America's yeah, public schools and in America's thinking. public universities. They lack common sense, critical thinking, empathy, a moral compass. Any moral compass. They have been told since their birth, basically, that America is evil mm -hmm. and that America is wrong. And it, oppressive. It, these are literally people who are were born right in yes. 2001 or in a couple of years yes. after 2001. Yes. Here, let's go to cut two now. Let's let's listen to this one again, rationalizing Osama bin Laden's evil. So this is f***ing insane. I just read Osama bin Laden's letter to America, which I will be going through right here. But it's actually so mind f***ing to me that terrorism has been sold as this idea to the American people. And honestly, just so many Western inhabitants within certain nations that... This group of people, this random group of people just suddenly wakes up one day and just f***ing hates you. Just wants you dead, wants you gone. And this is all because they believe that they're better than us. Like, that is the root of terrorism. It doesn't make sense. They just hate hey, your uh, nation, listen, but... a little uh, gender binary, non-binary <laughs> person with a earring in your nostrils. Let me explain something to you because I'm old enough to have actually been your age mm. when 9-11 happened. Nobody at the time thought, oh my gosh, these terrorists just woke up one day and hated us. That's bull. Nobody believed that at the time. And it was a, oh, people tell us that Al-Qaeda hates us because of our freedoms. Nobody thought that at the time. We knew exactly why Al-Qaeda hated us. Mm. We knew exactly why Al-Qaeda came after us. Nobody thought they came out of nowhere. We had seen their anger growing over mm. the years. They were already part of the American vernacular. Mm -hmm. We knew about terrorism because we had been attacked for years leading up to 9-11. Mm. They bombed our embassies. Yeah. They killed our Marines in barracks in Lebanon. They they tried to bomb the World Trade Center in the early 90s, pal. The, the, this is It's all based on a straw man lie, Patrice. Oh, wow. my gosh. People said that Osama, the, the Al-Qaeda just woke up one day and hated America and tried to kill us because of our freedoms. No. 
they that's that's not what it's been at all. It's because, first of all, Osama bin Laden was angry that we had an airfield in Saudi mm. Arabia that mm-hmm. he believes to be a, a holy land. Yeah, uh, he thought that we were we were um, sullying the uh, Mohammed's chosen country by putting a military base there. The military base that was constructed at the request and permission of the Saudi royal family Mm. when we were intervening in a war when one Muslim country invaded another Muslim country. And we were trying to protect that Muslim country, Kuwait. He also says, by the way, in his letter to America, I've read it. Mm. I've read it through the eyes of somebody who actually understands these things instead Mm -hmm. of these morons. Uh, He was angry that we had military in Afghanistan. American military was in Afghanistan when we were working with Osama bin Laden. That's right. Yes. When Osama bin Laden and his pals were part of the Mujahideen yes. trying to expel the Soviets. Yes. <laughs> we were there at his request. But see, this is what happens when you have a very narrow snapshot of history and you make your assessments about um, right and wrong based on one snapshot rather than the decades, centuries, millennia of, of, of conflict um, uh, ethnic conflict. It, 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 it's remarkable that these young people, they, but it's not surprising. Our pub, our education system has been so focused on just promoting one twisted oppressor versus oppressive um, from 1960 forward. Yeah. Look at history. So they have no context to, to, to read something like the Osama bin Laden letter and to say, okay, well, wait a minute. This guy, he has, he has lots of skin in the game, and this is why he's coming the way he is. Oh. Not just it's, oh, well, we, we should feel sorry for him because he's part of an oppressed class in America exactly. and America and its oppressors. Oh. That's all they've been learned. That's all they've been that's taught. All they've that's been all they've been taught, been taught is every, uh, more morality has to do with who the oppressor is and who the oppressed is. This critical, and, not critical and, thinking, but critical framework that is taught the, right now. The idea that Osama bin Laden is the oppressed, though, the man was born a gajillionaire yeah. in a, in a <laughs> huge family. All, any, any money that he had, any status, yeah. and the only reason people know his name is because he was born to, uh, to you know, the elite 1% mm. in Saudi Arabia. Um, and these are the same TikTokers who would rail against that, by the way, in their next yeah. video. <laughs> oh, and by the way, in the last video they did, be- before they put out the video I- explaining uh, how great Osama bin Laden is and how Al Qaeda had a point when they murdered Americans, thousands yes. of Americans on September 11th, the video they published right before that is, I don't understand how Donald Trump has all these loyal followers. Mm. I don't understand how Repub- the people in this country are supporting this man who is obviously a tyrant, who is obviously, oh, but now I'm going to do my video saying how Osama bin Laden it really has a point. It's, it's, yeah. they, they, you said it. They're, they have a broken moral compass. I, I would like to read, by the way. Yeah, go ahead. If I may, I want to read part of the yeah. letter to America. Let's yeah. hear it. They never got past the first three sentences, okay? <laughs> Here's the end of it. These are the same TikTokers, by the way. The other video that they're going to publish today, if you support the Palestinians, it doesn't make you anti-Semitic. It makes you <laughs> anti-Zionist, and your argument is not with the Jewish people, but your argument is with Benjamin Netanyahu's government in Apartheid Israel. Apartheid government, yeah. That's what they'll they say, that right? Word, okay, yeah. we'll, we'll listen to Osama bin Laden's <laughs> words. The American army is part of the American people. It is the very same people who are shamelessly helping the Jews <laughs> fight against us. Wait, <laughs> the Jews? I thought it was Zionists. I, mm. thought it was, I thought it was the Israeli government. This is why the American people cannot be innocent of all the crimes committed by the Americans and Jews <laughs> against us. So the, this is the guy they're applauding now. Yeah, yeah. A guy who is outwardly anti-Semitic and saying, yeah, we're here to kill Jews. A uh, little bit more on that. There's more to discuss oh. about the absolute moral rotten decay that is TikTok brought to you by the Communist Party in China. You know, the guy that Joe Biden and Democrats were just celebrating mm. yesterday in San Francisco. WMAL. Making sense of the news. Live. From the Home Paramount Pest Control Studios. Home Paramount, the leader in pest control since 1939. Support our wounded warriors during the Fisher House Radiothon November 30th and December 1st. Visit WMAL.com slash Fisher House. Anyone who lived through 9-11 is recoiling in horror at what these young people are saying. They've been indoctrinated. Their minds have been twisted. They've been brainwashed. They're weak. They're weak, pathetic souls. And I, I just posted on Twitter a minute ago, 
to the, to their parents, you failed. You failed them and you failed us. <laughs> you did fail. Uh, Mom, Dad, uh, listen, this entire thing, by the way, it's remarkable, Patrice, that this viral yeah. story, this viral story was um, uh, pushed by the algorithm of the overlords of TikTok mm -hmm. run by and overseen by the Communist Party in China. Yes. The entire thing exploded online yes. at the very same time Xi Jinping was meeting a big tech CEOs uh -huh. and the president of the United States uh -huh. in the summit. It, it tells you everything you need to know about TikTok and how oh, these yeah. stories explode on that. It's hard that, to justify uh, why any why we should not ban this. The, and I'm not for banning government banning, but private companies. But it's not exactly a private company, and it's not a U.S. company. Uh, you know that what we heard was um, Megyn Kelly. I actually almost thought it was Hillary Clinton when she when she first started speaking. Then I, you know, <laughs> wait a minute. I, I saw I listened to this clip, but she is absolutely right. Um, for those who did who lived through nine eleven, um, your perspective of of this 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 viral video TikTok reading TikTokers, you know, you you recognize this is what happens when we forget when we as a as a society, news agencies, education system. We for we 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 minimize what 9/11 what the impact of 9/11 was the way we minimize Pearl Har the attack on Pearl Harbor and this is what happens you have the luxury of being uh, a <clears throat> pretty much a, a, a country that is set apart from a lot of the other uh, issues global conflicts in the rest of the world and so you're lulled into complacency and it's been 20 years 21 years since 9 11 22 years since 9 11 that would not happen and then you have a younger generation who who doesn't even see the videos of the two planes hitting the two towers or the planes crashing into the the Pentagon or the plane being downed by some brave souls in Pennsylvania they have no context. They have no understanding because we're trying to protect people's feelings. No, this is the absolute result of that. We've got a young coddled generation that now thinks evil is good and good is evil. And yes, yeah. there is good and there is evil. And because we're no longer as a society also framing a lot of what we see in those very simple but very powerful terms, then you have confusion. And our younger generation is totally confused. Yeah, you're 100 percent right. And, and, and bin Laden, by the way, in his letter continues to say, you know, why did we attack innocent American civilians? Well, hmm. because the civilians are the ones who pay tax dollars to their government that funds their military and funds, as he puts it, the Jews. Hmm. Uh, he says the American people are the ones who employ both the men and women in the American forces which attack us. So in other words, in other words, every American has a target on their back, according hmm. to a terrorist, because you vote and pay taxes and support a military that Osama bin Laden doesn't, doesn't like. approve of. Yeah. So until you start voting the way Osama bin Laden wants you to vote, then you're going to be a target for a terrorist attack. And that's what these morons are celebrating. I, I got to be honest with you, though. Yeah. Because I know a lot of people look at this and they say, oh, this is a sign that America is decaying and we are youth. Are you know what? I don't. I honestly don't really believe this. I believe... I, I want to know, like, we know these videos that were put out. Yeah. I want to know who these people are. I want their names. Oh, I yeah. want to know where they live. I wouldn't be surprised if some of these people live in foreign countries. And ah. this was pushed on the algorithm to make it look like this is what America's youth believes. I honestly don't believe it, but I think that this is a nefarious attempt by TikTok and the Chinese government to push this agenda. Now, sadly, there are too many American kids who will see it and then say, oh, wow, gosh, I guess they have a point. But I think it started in a very nefarious, calculated yeah. way, only because if you look at the videos, and I have, I spent yeah. five, six minutes looking at a montage of them, they all sort of say the same thing, like they're reading from the same script. Mm -hmm. And that tells me this thing is, is it's an info op. Well, and that's what TikTok but is used for. It, well, frankly, Instagram, a lot of these social media uh, platforms, you, you can manipulate, you can hire influencers, give yeah. them a script, and then they'll run with it. And 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 and, I, and that's part of it. Because, and then when you have a lot of people saying the same thing at the same time, then it creates kind of that groundswell that um, uh, Ma Gla Maxwell Glad uh, talks about. I forget his name. Gladwell. Uh, yeah, Max. Ma uh, Max. 
Malcolm Gladwell. Thank you. Malcolm Sorry. Gladwell talked about the tipping point where yes. you, it, you reach a tipping Reaches point. Reaches critical mass. Exactly. Yeah. And it comes at a time when we are having this discussion about oppressor versus oppressive when it comes to the the Hamas supporters versus the right. pro-Israel supporters. So it all is happening at the same time. And I do think it has an influence on young people whose lives, who've, who've been trained now to think about not critical thinking, but critical race or critical whatever yeah. it is, um, that, that frame framework. A couple of things on this. Um, they found this letter to Osama bin, uh, by Osama bin Laden apparently on the Guardian website. Guardian is a, a very left-wing uh, website out of England. Yes. They deleted this from their website. Oh, Even they said, listen, this whole thing is being taken out of context, so we're removing it, number one. Number two, TikTok was reminded that their terms of service forbids the glorification and celebration of terrorism. <laughs> so they discontinued the hashtag on this, um, but huh. it was too little too late. Exactly. Uh, and number three, mom, dad, grandma, grandpa, aunt, uncle, godparents, if you haven't already, go to your kids' phones right now. If it's got TikTok on it, delete it. Delete Thank it you. And yeah. block it from being yeah. downloaded. It's just poison. Absolute poison. It's 6.23. It is 6.30 coming up. Denisha Allen, Black Minds Matter. Why are Democrats and the teachers unions failing the children of Baltimore? Next. WMAL-FM, Woodbridge, Washington. A cumulus media station. Making sense of the news. News Talk 105.9. News now. Now. On 105.9 FM and streaming worldwide on the WMAL app. O'Connor and Company. It's 6.37 on this edition of the O'Connor and Company program, Friday morning in the nation's capital. Coming up at 7.05, Adam Credo of the Free Beacon, 7.35, Phil Wegman of Real Clear Politics, 8.15, Julie Donaldson will give us a preview of the Commander's Game, and at 8.35, Brett Baer of Fox News Channel. I'm Larry O'Connor, alongside award-winning, <laughs> Christmas-decorating homeowner, <laughs> In Prince George's County, Maryland, Patrice Anwuka. Good morning, Patrice. Good morning. Happy Friday, Larry. Uh, thank you, ma'am. Uh, we are both Marylanders, mm -hmm. and so we are uh, plugged in as often as possible into what's going on in the free state. And I uh, get this. The revenue for the Maryland State Education Association, that would be the teachers' union, mm -hmm. uh, they have seen an increase of revenue this last year of 34%. Wow. They have made 34% more money, the teachers' union has, at a time when out of 13 Baltimore City High Schools, literally zero, zero, not one student in the Baltimore City High Schools are proficient in oh. math, according to the state standards. Joining us now is Denisha Allen, Black Minds Matter founder and also a senior fellow at American Federation for Children. All right, Denisha, uh, only, only in America and certainly only in a state like Maryland, are you rewarded with that kind of revenue increase when mm. you are an abysmal failure? That is right. You know, I wish we we all had this advantage, to be honest. You know, we could just sit back, be lazy, and just collect a big, fat check without yeah. doing nothing. Mm -hmm. um, and unfortunately, that is what the teachers' union in Maryland has been doing. Like you said, they, they've they received 30, in the, the average income um, for a Maryland employee, Maryland teachers' union employee, is $181. That's twice the income of the average uh, lower-income family in the state of Maryland. And those numbers are even worse for uh, for families in Baltimore. And you would think to yourself, like, you know, we should be shutting them down and hmm. give that money right to students. Well, and, and Denisha, so good to talk with you. Uh, this is, the, unfortunately, it wasn't always like this. I mean, I'm, I'm reading uh, that in 2013, Maryland was act students were actually leading, at, at least on pace, or leading the national average when it came to fourth grade reading and math. And now it's woeful to see how students are, have have um, have fallen. Yeah. Is there any way to tie student performance to teachers' union uh, funding and accountability. You know, I really, I really hope that that. You know, not the case, but unfortunately, you know, Project Baltimore came out with this report mm. that has linked it. You know, they've seen that with the continual decline of student uh, uh, academic outcomes, the Maryland Teachers Union has continued to collect dollars. 
And they only have about 90 employees. Hmm. Their employees have, you know, the number of employees has stayed consistent, and the amount of money that they're collecting has continued to increase. You know, there we already know that the teachers' union, Maryland teachers' union, teachers' unions across the country are not, they don't have students' best interest at heart, you know. They are a Mm -hmm. powerful political organization that lobbying to keep kids trapped in failing schools because they do not support providing them with education opportunities through school choice. And so, you know, it's sad to think that there is some deep-seated corruption, Mm -hmm. you know, in America's schools, but you you have to kind of squint your eye and and lean in and, and think so. Our guest is Denisha Allen. She's with American Federation for Children, which pushes for school choice legislation across the country. She's also the founder of Black Minds Matter, which is a great clearinghouse website yeah. with information about black-owned private schools that uh, clear the threshold of the organization in terms of their quality and their approach to academics. And, Denisha, I guess it's in that vein that I want to ask this question, because as Patrice just pointed out, you know, 10 years ago, Maryland schools were excelling for all races across the board. Then it seems they embraced this critical race theory thing. They've embraced the philosophy of Ibram X. Kendi about about anti-racism, about the oppressors and the oppressed, about systemic racism and equity. And so out out of the motivation of being anti-racist and embracing equity, they have actually destroyed yeah. the academic achievements that were being made in many black communities mm-hmm. in the state of Maryland. So I mean, it's so insidious that even if these people thought they were doing the right thing by, by saying, okay, we'll do what Ibram X. Kendi thinks we should do, they've actually failed the very students they claim they're supporting. So how do we break that? Yeah, you know, I, I'm, I preach it all the time. I say equity equals education freedom. We can't, you know, claim to be equitable for African Americans, for minority students, and not have education freedom be a part of that conversation. Mm. Because when we look at crime rates, when we look at health care disparities, all of these other housing, um, even the quality of neighborhoods and how they look and feel, it really all boils down to education. It's the bedrock of where everything starts. When you look inside of a prison, And you see that the average, you know, reading level of all the inmates is a third grade reading level. We don't talk about that as a prevention mechanism. We're really doing a disservice to society. And that's where school choice, that's where education freedom comes in. There are a lot of programs and a lot of things that, yeah, definitely spurred um, since COVID, but even before then. And talking about wanting to help and better the African-American community, insert whichever type of policy initiative or campaign, you know, that was out there. And the the one thing that never was talked about was education and Mm -hmm. reforming Mm -hmm. academic outcomes for uh, African-American students. And that's why I founded Black Minds Matter, because we were so interested in canceling pancakes and syrup or including another social program within our schools, but not actually getting behind the science of reading yeah. and how to teach kids how to do math. And equity equals education freedom. You cannot talk about this term without actually educating kids. And that's what, you know, everyone in Maryland, you know, needs to wake up to that. Mm. You know, Larry, you, you've been, you know, a champion for this for a long time and the more stories that come comes out all the kids in all of these schools that can't read they can't do math and now we see that the teacher unions have continued to collect a big fat check you know we really need to overhaul this system and i believe the entire country should be looking at this yeah. issue yeah. because it really shows that you know how we care about our kids and we set the precedence across the country of our um you know, our urgency around giving giving all kids a high well quality said. education. Yeah, and and now we've got a Governor Westmore who uh, campaigned on leave no one behind, and everyone's being left behind. Mm. Uh, Denisha, I, I don't know about you, but all I can think about is pancakes and syrup. Now. I don't know why you <laughs> needed to do that to me. Uh, Denisha Allen, it's <laughs> Thanks, a perfect Denisha. one-two punch here with Denish, with the American Federation for Children, and then Black Minds Matter. They're both necessary. Thanks, Denisha. Always good to talk with you. Happy uh, Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Thanks, guys.
It is 648 now on O'Connor and Company, rolling along on this Friday morning. Larry O'Connor with Patrice on Wuka. And uh, Patrice, we've heard quite a bit since the October 7th terror attacks yeah. in Israel that uh, that uh, Hamas does not properly represent the Palestinian people, mm-hmm. right? You can be pro-Palestinian without being pro-Hamas. In fact, the Palestinian people... Uh, hate Hamas just as much as you do. They want to. They want to free themselves. That's what from... outsiders claim. I haven't heard that actually from Palestinians. They, oh, no, they're no, no, not. No. Dem- yeah, no. Well, yeah. Uh, but this is what people, you know, the mm-hmm. aforementioned useful idiots in the yes. left would tell you. Well, we have our first comprehensive poll released now of the Palestinian people since the October seventh attacks. Seventy-five hmm. percent of Palestinians in Gaza support wow. and praise and celebrate Hamas and wow. the attacks of October 7th. Can I just break down that 75% and say 60% extremely support? So it's not even like, well, just a handful really ex- extremely support some moderate. It right. is strong support for Hamas among Palestinians. Yeah. And 98% of Palestinians have a negative view of America. Ninety-eight hmm. percent. Now, these are the people that Rashida Tlaib is celebrating. Yes, Rashida Tlaib is celebrating and going to bat for, and not just Rashida Tlaib. I mean, a, yeah, significant numbers. A of lot the of Democrat commentators a in lot the of, House of Representatives, yep, policy and media personalities, people who make policy. Mm-hmm. They are celebrating, supporting, and making excuses for a nation where ninety-eight percent of the people have a negative view of our country. Listen, listen, look at what this also means. 75% support the actual massacre. So yeah. you are, it is not just the bloodthirsty terrorist. It is also their family members and their friends and their fellow countrymen who also support the massacre of innocent civilians. Yeah. So let me get this straight. These people in Gaza, 75% of them support Hamas. Mm-hmm. 75% of them support, strongly support, in fact, the majority of them. Mm-hmm. The terror attacks of October 7th. Yes. That not only murdered over a thousand Americans and, excuse me, a thousand Israelis and Americans, Mm -hmm. but they've also taken 200 innocent people hostage for what, going on seven weeks now, including including nine Americans. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. That's who these, and and 75% of the Palestinians support the murder, the rape, the beheading. Babies baked in ovens and the kidnapping mm. and the hostage taking. Women's breasts being cut off and, yeah. and necrophilia, meaning having sex with dead bodies of women. And 98% yeah. of them hate America. And yet we have lawmakers and we have people within the Biden administration right now who are wringing their hands and trying to figure out a way to open up our gates to yes. let so-called refugees yes. from this con- from, from Gaza into our country. Where 98% of them hate us, and now we're going to open up our borders Mm. and let them in under the guise of humanitarian aid and asylum, knowing that they hate us and support murdering us, our allies, and taking us hostage. Why in the hell would we do that? That's a great question. We shouldn't. We uh, There's a reason why a lot of the other Muslim countries are not taking in those Palestinian refugees, number one. Number two, there are a lot of people who are in this country, whether they are immigrants who came here on student visas, who are studying in universities here in America, who harbor the, the, the who probably harbor the very same feelings about Americans, about yep. the Hamas, and about the December 7th attacks. So when you see this, these marches on campus and these pro-Palestinian flags, that is part of that. That means that all of that hate has been already imported and embedded in, here in the United right. States. That's right. That's right. We are not we are not home growing anti-Semites and racists and hate mongers in this country. We're importing them from other nations and then celebrating yeah. them. We're giving them student loans. We're giving them yes. student grants. We're, we're forgiving their student loans, by the way. And, and, uh, four senators, real fast, I want to yeah. get to this. Four senators, J.D. Vance of Ohio, mm-hmm. Mike Lee of Utah, Marco Rubio of Florida, and Rick Scott of Florida have mm-hmm. written a letter to the Biden administration urging them against resettlement of Palestinian refugees. In the letter, they say this, and it can't be repeated more often. We should be finding ways to reduce the number of terrorist sympathizers in yes. America not increase them. 